In this video, you're going to learn four key tricks that can help you remove your background from any video. Whether you want to mimic a green screen or just put text behind your object, these methods will work for both. But in order to do this, there are a couple of things that you will need to keep in mind when filming your video. First, you need to make sure everything is filmed on a tripod. If you just want to put text behind your subject, you can use a moving camera if you'd like. Second, when replacing a background with a photo or video, make sure that that video is shot in a situation with similar lighting and at the same camera angle. For all the video that I'm going to be using today, I'm going to be downloading off of Artgrid, which is a professional stock video site. The thing that I really like about Artgrid is it has collections of shots. Let's say that there's a shot that you like. You can click on it and then scroll down and there's all the other shots that were shot at that same location at the same time. So let's say you see a shot that you like but it's at the wrong angle or something like that. You can find another shot that has the same subject, same place, same time, but it's at a different angle. It's a really useful feature that especially helps when doing something like we're doing today. If you guys want to use my link in the description, you can get two free months on your subscription. And last, keep in mind that this is not a green screen replacement. None of these methods will give you as good of a result as a green screen or a blue screen. They are just alternatives that are mainly used for adding a CG object behind your subject. So starting off with the first trick, it is going to be the difference keyer. To do the difference keyer, you need to make sure you shoot everything on a tripod. If there is any movement in the shot, it will mess up the difference keyer effect. The shot should also be properly lit so we don't have a ton of grain in the background, which again will throw it off. Once you have finished shooting your shot, make sure to get a clean plate of the shot, which is a version of the shot with nothing in it. If the shot doesn't have too much noise in it, it's fine if you just use a freeze frame of the background. So now inside of DaVinci Resolve, we want to assemble all of the different shots that we're going to need. First up, we want our clean plate on the bottom. Then next up, we're going to want to put whatever we want behind the subject next. So in this case, it's just going to be me walking around in the background. And then finally, you want to put on your shot with your main subject. So main subject, whatever's going to be in the background, and then the clean plate, okay? And if you guys just want to do text and add it inside of Fusion, you don't need to do that uh, video 2 layer. You can just skip that, and then we'll add that in later. But the first step is going to be selecting all of this, right-clicking, and then doing a new Fusion clip. Now, if we head over to Fusion, we can come in here and quickly organize all of our uh, notes. All right, so there we go. I'm just going to go through and name it. So I'm going to uh, type clean plate, background subject and foreground subject. And now in order to do the difference keyer, we need to do shift space and add in the difference keyer node. Then we'll take our clean plate and put that into the background input of the difference keyer node and take the uh, foreground subject and put it into the uh, foreground input. Now if we view it, we can see we're already getting a nice key. We can play around with the high and low settings here to adjust the intensity of it. And we can even bring the low up and we just want to shift it until uh, just our foreground subject is visible. Then once you get a decent key, you can start playing around with the blur, contract, expand, and gamma controls. Down at the bottom here, it's not really working out just because that's a dark area in the clean plate and it kind of blends in with my shirt. But my background subject isn't going to be going behind that, so it's not any issue. So if we take the difference keyer output and put this into the merge 2, now if we view the media out, we can see our background subject is behind the foreground subject. And now when we play this, we can see we got a really good looking key uh, in just a couple minutes. Moving on to trick number two, contrast. For this method, you need to make sure the subject stands out from the background. This is a good method if you just want to put text behind your subject and they have a uh, bright or dark background behind them. All right, now onto the contrast trick. We're going to be putting text behind the skateboarder here. So first up, what we need to do is right click and do new fusion clip. Inside of fusion then, do shift space and add in the color corrector node. Then you wanna up your contrast as much as you can and play around with all the gain settings until your background is completely white. You can also use the lift gamma and all of that. And we just want to get it looking somewhere around there. All right, so as you can see, my entire background is completely white. Now, after the color corrector node, I wanna add in a bitmap node. By default, the bitmap node will be going into the color corrector node. So we want to disconnect that and drag the output of the color corrector into the yellow or input of the bitmap node. Now, if we look at the bitmap node, it's just going to be all white. And we need to change the channel from alpha to luminance. And now we can go back into the color corrector node and play around with the settings until our subject is uh, completely black and the background is completely white. Okay, so now we need to take a merge node and connect the media in into the background input. Then we'll grab another merge node and put the merge one node into the background input of merge two. Then take the media in and put it into the foreground input of merge two and have the bitmap as a mask on merge two. If we view merge two, it's going to look exactly the same. But now we can grab a text node and we can put it into the foreground input of merge one 
and when we uh, type in here, as you can see, we can only see the skate text where the skateboarder is. Now that's kind of the opposite of what we want. So let's come into the bitmap and check invert. And now, as you can see, the skate text is going to be behind the skateboarder. And there we go, just like that, we have put text behind a subject. Next up, we have trick number three, and that is going to be Luma Gear. Luma Gear is going to be very similar to contrast and will be used in situations where there is a lot of contrast between the background and the subject. Now onto a Luma Gear. I'm going to be using the same composition that I used last time, but this time adding in a Luma Gear to start. If we view the Luma Gear, what we need to do is isolate uh, either the sky or the subject. So in this situation, I'm going to be isolating the subject here, and right there is pretty good. Again, we can play around with all the blur, contract expand, and gamma controls to get what we want. But now I'm going to do the same merge setup that I did on the last method. And then I'm going to click invert inside of the Luma gear node. And now we can just see the subject. So I'm going to make the same merge setup that I did in the last method, but this time have the Luma gear come into the foreground input of the merge node. And now if I put any text into the merge one node, you can see it is already behind the skateboarder. Finally, we have Runaway ML. Runaway ML is an online machine learning video editor that allows you to do rotoscoping with one click. The cool thing about Runaway ML is it's going to work on any device no matter how powerful it is because it is all based online. Your software is constantly improving and getting better and better at doing the rotoscoping and they're editing all sorts of other video editing features as well. If you'd like to pick it up, you can get it at the link below. But if you don't have access to Runaway ML, another trick that you can use is the Magic Mask inside of DaVinci Resolve. It's not going to give you as good of a result and it's going to use your computer uh, so it'll really slow down your project. So we are now on the Runway ML interface and we just need to start by uploading our content. So if I just drag it anywhere on the screen, it will upload it into our videos tab. If I drag it down onto this timeline down here, you can see it'll load up into the viewer. And now to do the automatic rotoscoping, we need the subject to be in frame. So I'm going to start at the middle here. Then having include selected, I can just tap on the subject anywhere, give it a second to buffer, and now it is already trying to rotoscope the object. Now it didn't do a perfect job so we can go around and click on the subjects or the parts of the subject that it missed. And in some spots it also kept the sky in. So we can hit two on our keyboard and now we're on the exclude tool. So let's click down there and it's now excluding that region of the shot. Now this is just one frame, but if I want to do rest of the video, all I have to do is hit the preview button here and it will load the mask for rest of the video automatically adjusting it as the subject moves. Okay, so it does a really good job at first here, but then it kind of falls apart at the end. So in order to fix that, we just need to take our playhead to the end, and then start adding some more points to it, and excluding other regions. Then we can preview it again, and it'll update the mask throughout the whole clip based on the points that we just gave it. I'm just going to go through my clip quick and get it all perfect. But once you think it's looking pretty good, you can come over here and toggle it from foreground to background, and now it'll add a green screen behind it so you can see what it'll look like once it's finally exported. You can also add a feather mask, which I like to do, and then you can come up to export, and then you can select your export options. I'm just going to name this skate skateboard, uh, and then I'm going to select uh, exporting in ProRes, so it already has the transparent background built into it. Next, I'll click export video, and then it'll just export in the background until it is ready to actually download. Once it's ready to download, you'll get an email letting you know that it is ready. Once it's downloaded, you can just import it right into DaVinci Resolve, and if you layer it on top of text or something, right on the edit page, as you can see, it is already doing the transparency effect. But those are the four keying tricks that I use. If you guys have another trick that you like to use, make sure to leave it in the comments down below. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time for another video.